Hello and welcome to the Sunday Night Football Showdown for the AFC playoffs. We got the LA Chargers at the Las Vegas Raiders. I am your host, Matthew Amato for Lions.com, here with my co-host, Jason Gobo. And uh, what a game. Uh, when in your in type scenario, the perfect game to have on Sunday Night Football in the first Week 18 ever. And uh, despite the ups and downs of these two teams, especially from a betting perspective, it will be an entertaining matchup. You got Justin Herbert. I mean, needs no introduction at this point. One of the best quarterbacks in the league. Derek Carr playing out of his mind. Uh, we have fellow writer Scott <laughs> at uh, lineups who even wants to uh, crown him MVP, maybe just a little bit. But um, what a what a game. Minus three, Chargers. How are you feeling, Jason? I mean, I couldn't think of two better teams to wrap up the betting year with <laughs> for the regular season <laughs> than the Chargers and Raiders. <laughs> I mean... You know, both basically around 500 against the spread this year. Both teams have pulled off bad wins, bad losses, good wins, good losses, you name it. Like, it's been tricky to really figure these two teams out. Um, but at least we got, I think, what, some clarification on the COVID list and injury list for these two teams. Like, I think we're looking to be pretty full strength on both sides. Yeah, that's, I mean, we did as much research as we could. We spent the last hour looking for the in, for the COVID report for both these teams, and the best thing I could do was find and actually write down from beat reporters. It seems like no one of note is really going to be on the COVID list at this point, recording this on Friday, um, for either of these teams. It seems like Derwin James is going to be healthy, Corey Lindsley is going to be healthy, Max Crosby, Darren Waller, guys that were previously out seem to be in. So... Unless they were on IR, it seems like everyone that really matters for this game should be playing. Feel free to correct us in the comments because A, it's going to change by the time this video releases. And then B, we might have missed something because I went through as many beat reporters as I could. Nobody seems to have a comprehensive list. I don't know why. Yeah, I mean, you know, at best we can try calling some of the <laughs> local LA hospitals um, <laughs> just to get any any info there. But, uh, you know, it looks relatively clear and hopefully that stays that way because this is you know, going to be a fun game uh, to wrap up the season. And I'm going to be back in the Chargers again. It's just as much as I really respect what the Raiders have done this year and competed and Derek Carr, what he's done. Um, you can make the case, I think, for both sides here, but I, I'm just still going to make the case for the Chargers offense, putting up big numbers. Um, you got to hope that the defense figures it out. Luckily, this isn't like a five and a half, four and a half like type of spread that they need to cover. Um, I'm curious to see where this one actually lands up at lines up, you know, closer to game time. Um, I would probably buy the half point mm -hmm. here for the chargers, you know, like a minus three, like it's minus minus one thirty five for two and a half on DraftKings. I think you take that um, and just avoid the push. I, I like the offense here. Like I said, I I, I don't really trust the, the Raiders defense, even though they play kind of up and down for the second half of the season. A lot of that's been pretty matchup dependent. Um, this is once again, a, a major edge for the Chargers offense in terms of third down defense, like the uh, Raiders defense is one of the worst in terms of third down category. Um, Chargers are third in the league. And this is a team that, you know, last time these, these two teams played, like Eckler had a field day. Um, they just don't have enough kind of big time defensive players that can slow down everybody on this Chargers offense. And at the end of the day, like I still like to back Herbert here in this spot. I think the offensive line has proved we've seen a lot of success there. You know, I think it can handle the Raiders pass rush that has been the positive on that defensive side. And that's why the Chargers put up solid points. It's just a matter of if the defense can do enough, and I do think they can do enough um, against this Raiders offense, especially if they kind of – I want to see them kind of sell out more against the pass rather than Josh Jacobs in the run. Yeah, so echoing a lot of what you said, I, one thing I want to give the Chargers credit is this secondary is actually pretty good. Uh, the thing is they haven't all been healthy and seemingly since the halfway point of the season. Seems like they're all healthy now, and uh, I think Derek Carr's really going to struggle – it's going to be a lot of force feeding Waller, um, which I don't know what percent he's at with the injuries he's dealt with coming off COVID. Don't know if he'll symptomatic. So if he's not at 100%, this is going to be a rough game for Carr, in my opinion. Uh, every time I've wanted to bet on the Raiders backed off of their pass rush, they failed. <laughs> and they didn't get a pass rush. And that's probably been why it's been so frustrating to bet on them specifically. It's like you finally are like, you know what, let's give them credit. They can hit the 
hit the pass rush. They're going to cause some turnovers. The next game, they get zero pressures. Um, and you're like, w- why? What happened? And usually there's not even an answer. It's just they didn't perform against a bad line. Um, so I'm not going to b- bet based off of that anymore. I'm with you. Just going to be bet based off of Eckler having a good game, Herbert doing enough. I really just don't think the Raiders score a ton of points. Um, if the Raiders cover this game, it's because they kept the Chargers to under 21, I want to say. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, like you said, like, you know, the Raiders have won, you know, their last three games. But, you know, 16-14 against the Browns, 17-13 against the Broncos, 23-20. Like, yep. a lot of one-score games that could have easily gone the other way. And a lot of low-scoring games where against pretty pretty bad offenses that we don't trust. So, when you kind of factor in their other schedules and who they've lost to, I think we kind of see that trend continue where they lose to the powerful offensive teams in the league. And that's certainly the chargers on a good day. Yep. And then the over under this one, I am not touching. I will say if you're making a big Sunday teaser, I would not mind finishing it off with the over 43. Honestly, I don't even know if I mind finishing it off with the under 55. I think giving yourself six points on either side, uh, probably pretty good because I do think this game finishes right around the 45 to 40 to, to 51 mark. Like I th- that's where I see this ending up. I see a lot of 27 19s, you know, 24 17s, which would clearly hit the under. I don't know. It, it, it's a tough game. I guess 49 and a half. I have to lean the under if you're going to push me on it. Um, but I don't think it's going to be under 43 points. If that makes sense. Yeah, this is a pretty well spot on number Um, because I think when we look at these two offenses, could we see them moving the ball at times? Yeah, sure. But like finishing drives hasn't been the most consistent, you know, production out of these two offenses, especially the Raiders side, and especially just because it's basically the Hunter Renfro show. And then like hopefully they fall into the end zone at some point um, because that's pretty much their offense right now. And Waller coming back helps, but teams just know where they're going in the red zone right now. Yeah. So we're just going to stay away from point totals in this one. I think we're just going to back the Chargers. I don't mind the minus three push. Like, it's irritating, but I think minus 115 is not the worst. I have a really big gut feeling this is going to be three and a half by the time you're either seeing this or going to bet it. In that case, I'm totally with Jason. Just buy down the two and a half. Get at minus 135, minus 140, whatever it is. Um, Then you avoid the push, and you avoid the dreaded losing because – on a field goal, because the Chargers just seem like the kind of team that are going to let the Raiders drive, hit a two-point conversion to tie the game with a minute left, and then win it on a field goal. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to dominate the whole game. They're going to, I don't know, Derwin James gets hurt or something like that. It's oh, just, yeah, it's, the typical Chargers ending to exactly. every Chargers game. Yeah. Exactly. So, to avoid that, bet them minus two and a half. You still might be heartbroken. Who knows? But <laughs> at least you have a better chance of not being heartbroken. Um so going to wrap it up for this one. We'll do player props next. Thank you guys for watching. As always, you can click subscribe and the bell to get notified when our videos go up. If you like this one, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike and comment down below your favorite bets for this Sunday night football matchup. We'll see you for your next one very soon.